Thank you. I'm Mark Anderson from Case Western. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Uh, myself and Dr. Sippy have nothing to disclose, while Dr. Marks uh, has been a consultant for Olympus and Boston Scientific, uh, neither of which have any uh, impact on this presentation. So gastroparesis uh, is a functional disorder of, uh, of obstruction in, uh, with, sorry, uh, a functional disorder of the stomach without obstruction, symptoms being nausea, vomiting, uh, early satiety, and uh, even pain. Um, the etiology uh, can either be idiopathic, diabetic, or iatrogenic from surgical procedures. Uh, diagnosis is confirmed with a gastric emptying study with also an EGD to rule out any physical obstruction. Uh, treatment is dietary and behavior modifications, uh, glycemic control in those with a diabetic uh, etiology, and prokinetic and antiemetic medications. Uh, for severe refractory cases, surgical intervention uh, has been offered, uh, including gastrojejunostomy, uh, gastric pacers or electrical stimulating devices, um, et cetera. So endoscopic pyloromyotomy for gastroparesis has been performed since 2013 following the widespread uh, success of POEM for achalasia. It involves the same four steps, uh, mucosotomy, creation of a tunnel, pyloromyotomy, and finally closure of your initial mucosotomy. Uh, it does not cure the underlying disease process. Uh, however, it, can sh it has shown improvement in symptoms and also quality of life. Um, so. Slide. There we go. Um, there have been multiple studies uh, presented at this meeting and others uh, showing the success of GPOP for refractory gastroparesis. Um, it's been shown to be a safe and feasible op uh, safe and feasible option for this disease process. It improves symptoms uh, on validated uh, ob subjective scales. It also has been shown to improve or normalize gastric emptying uh, in up to 86% of patients. Uh, but however, this um, data is, is widespread, um, but it does show clinical benefits regardless of etiology, being idi uh, idiopathic, diabetic, or vagotomy induced. So for post-esophagectomy reflux, uh, it's mostly presented in 20, say it's about 20 to 30 percent prevalent. Um, there are multiple uh, physiologic and contributing factors, including loss of anti-reflux mechanisms such as the LES, a diaphragmatic sling, and the angle of hiss. Uh, the positive intra-abdominal pressure and negative intrathoracic pressure is shown to increase reflux. And finally, impaired esophageal or gastric remnant mo motility, either pre-existing uh, or as a result of surgery from denervation of, of your esophageal uh, of nerves and also your vagotomy, which is inherent to your procedure. The workup is largely the same, uh, EGD, esophagram. Uh, to rule out any physical obstruction or stricture and uh, even t uh, trialing a PPI. Um, here I show a resection line for um, creating the gastric conduit during uh, esophagectomy, and you can see how this uh, vagotomy is inherent to the procedure. Um, prevalence of this disease post esophagectomy is uh, 20 to 30 or 15 to 30 percent uh, of patients, depending on what you read. Um, diagnosis and treatment are largely the same. Um, surgical therapies being pyloroplasty done at the time of the operation, uh, although data on this is, is split in terms of preventing uh, reflux postoperatively. Um, endoscopic therapies such as dilation and Botox, and finally pyloroplasty. Um, many are now considering and are, have already implemented, implemented endoscopic uh, pyloromyotomy for this disease process. So I present a patient who's a 71-year-old male who had long segment Barrett's esophagus with high-grade dysplasia. He underwent uh, Ivor Lewis esophagectomy with a pyloroplasty in 2004. This is complicated by um, induced uh, vagotomy-induced gastroparesis. He had a past medical history listed there. Notably, his diabetes was well controlled, and he did not have any evidence of gastroparesis prior to his procedure. Um, he's been trialed on multiple medications, including promotility agents, um, and actually had stopped drinking over the past year, but was social alcohol and a former smoker before his esophagectomy. So a uh, preoperative timeline, he underwent his esophagectomy in 2004. Uh, he had multiple admissions for aspiration pneumonia, refractory to intermittent Botox and pneumatic dilation at outside hospital. Uh, he came to our uh, institution in December 2017 and, and had a barium swallow.
So here we see a slight delay at the, at the hiatus, but uh, more importantly, um, a lot of residual uh, gastric contents in his conduit uh, below his diaphragm. Uh, Preoperatively underwent, again, a dilation of the gastric conduit at the hiatus because of a presumed stricture there, but um, it had no improvement on a repeat barium swallow. Um, you can see severe esophagitis, uh, large volume of flu uh, food, and also uh, recurrent Barrett's uh, without dysplasia on biopsy. Uh, we saw him in clinic. He reported a 20, 30 pound weight loss and balloon dilation and Botox offered only partial relief that lasted about six weeks. He underwent a gastric emptying study which confirmed a severe gastroparesis with 63% retention at four hours. So here our endoscope is mounted with a clear distal cap and advanced into the cervical esophagus. There's an extensive amount of bile in the esophagus, um, but a patent anastomosis. There is residual food in the stomach, which made visualization difficult. Um, and the working space was notably reduced uh, given the patient's postoperative anatomy. The pylorus was visualized. Uh, and initially difficult to traverse here. Um, and the tortuosity of the gastric lumen along with the redundancy of the gastric folds uh, made this difficult. Uh, the lesser curve antrum was not easily visualized uh, for, because of these factors as well. A segment of the lesser curve was identified four centimeters proximal to the pyloric channel and uh, methylene blue with saline and epinephrine was injected for submucosal elevation. A transverse mucosotomy was then made with a triangle tip knife. It was difficult to maintain tension and counter tension given the tortuosity of his uh, distal uh, gastric remnant. The endoscope was, in, endos endoscope was then placed in the submucosal plane and a tunnel was created distally beyond the, uh, beyond the pyloric musculature. So once the submucosal tunnel was complete, the pyloric muscle was identified and divided with the same triangle tip knife. And finally, uh, the pylorus was reinspected and uh, was more widely patent and easier to traverse with the scope on repeat attempts. The mucosotomy was then closed with uh, endoscopic clips and the pylorus was again examined. Challenges to performing this procedure in this patient population was a limited working space. Uh, maintaining insufflation was exceedingly difficult given he had no LES. Um, and also creating tension for the initial mucosotomy was definitely a challenge that required patients um, but uh, with a POEM skill set and careful selection of your mucosotomy site, this is a doable procedure for this uh, patient population. Uh, Postoperatively, he had a swallow study that showed contrast uh, going into the gastric lumen and then freely flowing into the duodenum. He was given a clear liquid diet and discharged home. On postoperative day five, um, he was, must have been feeling very well because he decided to eat, eat a large meal and went to bed. Uh, woke up aspirating and coughing four hours later and was readmitted with aspiration pneumonitis. We reinforced dietary habits of not eating soon uh, and lying supine for uh, multiple hours, which he had been doing previously. Um, at three week follow up, he was tolerating small meals and liquids. His emesis has been reduced to once per week, down from three. And he underwent EGD at uh, about six months and showed a, a pylorus that had, was widely patent. He had not been hospitalized during this stretch as opposed to being hospitalized monthly for aspiration pneumonia uh, prior to our procedure and a repeat gastric emptying study is pending at this time. Uh, so future investigations with, a, with a, uh, more patients was definitely, I think, a good idea. It, it'll be interesting to see which patients post-esophagectomy will benefit from POP as we've shown for um, run-of-the-mill gastroparesis. Um, and I think looking at objective measures such as gastric emptying study before and after, as well as subjective uh, measures such as uh, the gastroparesis um, symptom index would also be a good idea to look at preoperatively and postoperatively.
So in summary, it's a 71-year-old who had esophagectomy-induced uh, gastroparesis who underwent a successful POP uh, with improved post-operative symptoms. Uh, esophagectomies are increasingly uh, more prevalent with 15,000 performed in the 10-year period between 2001 and 2010, with gastroparesis being common among survivors. Um, larger case series and prospective studies are needed uh, to confirm that this patient population will benefit. Uh, but overall, this case illustrates an opportunity for us to um, expand our application of, of endoscopic myotomy to help a very frustrated and de debilitated patient population. Thank you. Thank you.